Welcome everyone to the Digital Marketers Graduation Party and Small Business Marketing Showcase. My name is Dan Gretsch. I am the CEO and founder of BizHack Academy uh, and the proud uh, and excited host of today's festivities. When was the last time you went to an event whose sole purpose was dedicated to celebrating examples of extraordinary marketing by small businesses? Never. Uh, this is the first time uh, you've experienced it, and we are so excited to have you along for the ride. Um, I, as I said, am the founder and CEO of BizHack Academy. Uh, I am a business storyteller. What that means is I took a 20-year uh, career uh, in, in journalism uh, and writing, and over the last decade have pivoted that uh, into first digital marketing, then teaching digital marketing, and now running a business that teaches others how to market themselves. Um, I am also a small business owner and deeply passionate uh, about building uh, our small business, uh, BizHack Academy, and building your small businesses uh, through the power uh, of digital marketing knowledge. I, um, we are so thrilled uh, by the many incredible partners and accolades that we have gotten in this four plus year journey. Uh, we've been recognized by accelerator programs run by Goldman Sachs, the Knight Foundation and Entrepreneurs Organization. We've won uh, awards from the Miami Herald, the AMA and, and Reagan. And we've partnered with the three top uh, educational institutions in South Florida, FIU, Broward College and Miami-Dade College and just dozens of small business support organizations, including, as we'll learn about a little later today, the office of the Miami-Dade Mayor, Daniela Levine Cava. I wanted to take a minute and just honor why uh, I've started BizHack and why we do this work. Uh, one of the big things that we teach, and you're gonna see this in all the presentations today, is that the foundation of every small business is the story of me and the core values of the company, is the reason uh, that you as a uh, small business owner have taken the leap, taken the risk and started your own business. And for me, it's to honor the legacy uh, of my mother. Uh, she was an inner city art teacher in inner city Philadelphia for her entire career, 35 years. You know, I am uh, a privileged white guy who grew up in the suburbs and my mom every day, you know, got into a car and drove into some of the roughest neighborhoods of inner city Philadelphia and taught an underdog subject art to kids in incredible need. And I used to go to visit her uh, in those art classes as a child. Uh, and I saw the impact that she was having on their lives and the community that she built in her class. Mrs. Gretsch, Mrs. Gretsch, look what happened to me. Mrs. Gretsch, I got into college, Mrs. Gretsch. And it, it just, became a part of who I am. Um, on my entire mother's side of my family, they're all tr school teachers. My grandfather, uh, Henry Marcus, um, was an, a physics teacher in the nation's second oldest public high school, Central High School in Philadelphia. Uh, my paternal grandfather, my dad's dad, was a coach in La Liga, the Spanish professional soccer league. And on both sides of my family, coaching and teaching run all the way down and land at me. And so with BizHack Academy, with today's celebration, I am honoring my family legacy that goes back more than two generations. And I couldn't be more proud to be here today to share that story with you. And more importantly, to share the incredible entrepreneurs who've gone through uh, the two programs that we're celebrating today. And so enough about me, let's talk about you, the Marketing Masters and the Link Launchers, Cohort 21 of the Digital Marketers Edge and Cohort 3 of the LinkedIn Business Edge. Yay! Woo! -hoo! Thank you, Lisa. Woo! -hoo! Hands crossed. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, I wanted to... Um, 
acknowledge the, and you're gonna be hearing a little bit more from each of them a little bit later when we do the certificate ceremony, but I wanted to acknowledge the lead instructors of each of these programs. Starting with Michael Pace, the CMO of Connected Jewelry LLC uh, and the lead instructor of the Digital Marketers Edge Lead Generation Program. Uh, Michael um, ran almost 25 hours of live instruction, oversaw the instructional team uh, that supported these participants, uh, and gave tremendous um, personal time and effort, uh, despite his busy job as a CMO, to help support these real life campaigns by these real businesses trying to make real money. And you'll see examples uh, of leads and sales generated through Michael and his teaching team's uh, incredible support. Similarly, I wanted to acknowledge the amazing Cheryl Cattell uh, of All Maya. Uh, Cheryl Cattell is not only the lead instructor of the LinkedIn Business Edge, she is also the course creator. Uh, the first time ever that we have brought in uh, someone to build a course with us, and um, you're the best course creator a person could ask for. We love the course that we've built, uh, and we're so excited uh, to see it take off to the stars. This is the third time we've run it uh, and we're getting a great feedback on it. I also want to acknowledge the incredible work that uh, Christy Stewart Hoffman, uh, Carolyn Quinton and Suzanne Jewell have done uh, as marketing coaches for each of the programs and you'll be hearing from each of them soon. Today's program, the heart of today's program are case studies of real life campaigns from the marketing masters and the link launchers. Uh, we will have, as all graduations should, uh, a graduation ceremony. We will take a class photo, and then we will give out the highest honor that BizHack Academy has, the BizHacker Awards. Uh, these are um, the most exclusive and the most uh, important award we give because they're voted on by the participants in the program of their peers. And then finally, uh, we're going to be raffling off thank you gifts. Uh, part of what we talk about is the importance of peer learning. And so all of us have kind of scrum like together, gotten together and helped each other market their businesses. And the uh, thank you gifts are gifts from one business owner to one of their peers in the program as a thank you for all that help and that generosity of spirit. We are all amazing experienced professionals and we all bring a tremendous amount to the table uh, when we work together and we have fostered through the BizHack courses an environment where we're all helping one another whether it's through the LinkedIn pod or through the WhatsApp group and everybody is learning from everyone in the labs uh, on online and and these thank you gifts uh, are there to acknowledge and then we have a couple surprises at the end if time permits so let's start with those thank you gifts to acknowledge that we could not be here today uh, if not for one another. So the first is uh, Juice Defined is giving a $25 gift certificate and the winner is? Jamie Spector. Yay, Jamie. Uh, Jail Candle Company uh, is giving a candle and the winner is? Lisa Nalvin. Creative Dev Software is giving a 30 minutes talk on first steps before hiring a mobile app developer. And the winner is? Ann Johnson Bay. Yay. <laughs> Miami Waterkeeper tote bag, bandana, water bottle, and reusable straw. You can tell that they're a nonprofit that does their swag well. Uh, and the winner is? Olivia Cantu. The Intention Dry Erase Board from Recovery Boards of Lisa Nalvin. And the winner is? Tangi Frederick. Hey, Tangi. Audio download for stress relief. I think we all need that from Martin and Associates. And the winner is? Dominique Jean Baptiste. Ooh, stress relief for Dominique. A free sash from Sashco, the creator of the sashes for Miss America. And the winner is? Elizabeth Dan Gretsch. <laughs> Elizabeth Wings Spooner. Dan Gretsch. <laughs> oh, it's Elizabeth Spooner. I wanted that. Uh, uh, one free 60 minute life coaching session with all Maya. That's Cheryl Cattell's company. And the winner is 
Cassidy Meeks. Good for you, Cassidy. Conflict Dynamics Profile, Individual Assessment and Debrief from Quinton and Associates. Go and the winner is? <laughs> Rochelle. Rochelle, congratulations. Mindful Stress Test and Toolkit from Suzanne Jewell, the Mindful Entrepreneur, one of our marketing coaches. You'll see the instructors also give thank you gifts. That one's going to Caroline Lettosquit. Beautiful. Um, a coffee book about the Cotswolds by Saucery. That one's going to, my apologies, next page, <laughs> Margaret Martin. <laughs> Margaret, I love how there's a range in values on this one. I'm very curious what that's all about. Uh, isn't a coffee book have a price? Let's just call it $70 value. Congratulations. Um, I did want to share uh, some of the numbers. We've had more than 3,500 businesses trained either through our formal programs or the extensive outreach that we've done. Just through the work we're doing with the Office of the Mayor of Miami-Dade County, we are nearly at 1,000 live businesses trained. So we are touching literally thousands of lives and there's no deeper touch that we do than these courses, these intensives that you guys have finished. We have given out now nearly 850 digital marketing certificates uh, through the LinkedIn or the Digital Marketers Edge course. And we have had 66 masterclasses free and open to the community funded by BizHack in partnership uh, with many promotional sponsors, um, and we've been recognized for three national awards. So without further ado, I want to welcome some of the case studies from the Digital Marketers Edge, and these are the companies of the Marketing Masters. Yay! Uh, you'll notice that BizHack is one of them. Uh, that's because our dear Tiffany Laura actually uh, ate our own dog food. She went through the course as a participant. She's our newest uh, employee. Uh, and, uh, and then we had an extraordinary group uh, of businesses. Um, I wanna hand the mic over uh, to Christy uh, Stewart Harfman from the ha uh, Happy Family blog. She is one of the marketing coaches for uh, the LinkedIn, uh, for the Digital Marketers Edge. And I wanna give her a chance to just talk a little bit about her experience uh, coaching this semester and any reflections or messages Messages that she wanted to send uh, to the graduating cohort. Wonderful. Thank you, Dan. This is so exciting. I haven't been to a graduation and like, I, right, I love that my, my team knows I love to do snaps, right? I feel like it's been so much fun, but this has been an absolutely incredible experience. You know, I'm a solopreneur, which means I work most of my day by myself in my office, <laughs> alone with my thoughts. Um, and this experience to be in community with other business owners who understand that struggle has just been absolutely unbelievable. And you guys have all been so open and honest about the trials in your businesses and the exciting parts. And just to see everyone come together, the labs, I mean, I love Mike and I love Mike's accent. So I love his classes as well. But the labs, <laughs> right? I mean, if, even my husband was like, that man's accent is wonderful. I'm like, I know I get to hang with him all the time. But the labs are really my truly my favorite part because we got to come together and talk about what is going to make a difference in your business. And to see all of you come together and come up with these great ideas that we as business owners may have never thought of and say, hey, have you thought about tweaking? Like we talked to Cristobal. Hey, Cristobal, have you thought about like classes for adults? And he's like, yes, I have. What if we do this? And seeing you guys create these absolutely incredible videos. Like I know I joked with you that some of them that I have seen that have worked really well were really terrible, but none of the people in our cohort had bad videos. And to see people come in with, little or no digital marketing experience. I'm looking at Anne because she was always so sweet saying like, I don't know what I'm doing, right? But then to come through this course and see such incredible results. And so I hope that you guys take this experience and realize that marketing is here for us to test and test and test and test, right? And so the worst thing that we can do is to not move forward. And I have been so impressed with the approach that you guys have taken and the results that you've all had. And so this has been an absolute honor and I hope that I will continue to follow y'all's businesses for a long time to come. And I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. So thank you. Um, and you know, I wanna say, you know, on a personal level, um, we've had a lot of marketing coaches, more than 40 come through this program. 
And I absolutely rank you in the very, among the very best we've ever had. Mm -hmm. um, you gave so much, so much. And we all saw it and we honor it. And Lisa's, you know, making gesticulations. <laughs> Guys, if you want to use the reactions, if you, fee if you agree with me that Christy Stewart Hoffman put in an unbelievable amount of love and effort you know, please send her an emoticon, put something in the chat. You know, uh, Kem and Ann said she was also your therapist. I love it. Great energy <laughs> from Denise. So, you know, you, you guys have um, benefited so much from the love and life energy that Christy has given. And we as an instructional team, as a company have also benefited from it. So uh, I'm very excited for, for this is the start of a long and really fruitful partnership with you. Me as well. It's been an absolute honor. So thank you guys. And I, I feel so blessed to have had such an incredible experience. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, so uh, with that, now we're going to go, uh, Mike, you'll have a chance to talk um, right before you give the, the uh, presentations. Um, and so we're going to now go ahead and uh, go right into those presentations. So Cristobal, you're up first. I'm going to do a quick intro, um, and then uh, and then we'll talk. Um, what can I say about Cristobal Giddy of Machida Karate Miami? First of all, he's one of the only people to ever give two graduation presentations, and the reason why is because he was one of two graduation speakers in the Pinecrest course that we ran a year ago. And that was a five hour course. This is a 35 hour course. We just scratched the surface a year ago. And Cristobal, who is a trained karate master who runs Machida Karate Miami, and who is also like my buddy who I have beers with, uh, decided that he wants to become uh, a technically proficient digital marketer uh, to help grow his business and maybe other businesses after that. Um, the good news is that uh, with his real life campaign, which featured a one a week free trial to new customers, um, he had a budget of $225. He got three trials uh, representing a customer lifetime value of almost $9,000 per year. Um, and what he's really done is uh, follow the lead building system process uh, to a T uh, and it's yielding extraordinary results. And so without further ado, uh, mi hermano Cristobal Givi. Hi everybody. Hi everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, excellent. Let me share my um, presentation here. Wait, let me find it. Sorry, I thought I was ready. Here I am. Okay, and there. So, hi everybody. Uh, Dan, thank you for such a, a graceful introduction. I think you you um, were a little generous there, but um, thanks to Dan, we are doing really good numbers and. I'd like to give you guys, sorry, I gotta go to the game. I'd like to give you guys um, a little rundown of what we accomplished this time around. Okay, the first time, uh, Dan, like Dan said, he gave us a, this just scratch the surface, gave us an introduction to what we needed to do. And now we, um, I found myself that a year later, I was trying to accomplish the goals that Dan outlined for us, but I needed more help. And um, though I, I intended to do, to do it last year, at the end of the year, um, I got in this year and I'm very happy to do it because I got to get coached by Christy and, and, um, and Michael and, and uh, I learned so much. So uh, without further ado, um, my company is Machida Karate Miami. Um, the, this is something that's been in my family forever. My father was my sensei and through that training, I've been able to meet up with some of the world's best in my field. Um, and I get to do what I love, which is teaching young kids. My favorite thing to do is to watch little ones like you see there um, have, get engaged, find a method to develop themselves, 
find courage in themselves and uh and you know we gain their trust and we empower them uh, and that's the most rewarding thing that i can do i think uh, and like i said my um my quick story of me that dan helped me write was um my father started teaching me karate when i was four years old um we were originally from chile where my father was an architect and he uh along with being an architect he also loved and studied martial arts his whole life after moving to Miami in 1985. He established our academy here in Pinecrest and then set the course for our family tradition in serving our community. I did not always follow my father's footsteps. I, after high school, I followed my own. And uh, then eventually I was involved, but eventually my father's um, health declined and he asked me to continue the academy after his passing. So I did, and for the past, well, since 2006, I have been leading the academy here in Pinecrest with my father's same um, traditional values. Our, our goal here was to get more customers in the door. We want memberships. We want people to uh, come and sign up and be with us for a long, long time. We often see people, young kids off to college has been my experience. So with that in mind, I we began targeting our core um, audience, which is the super mom. You know, she's a person who is, uh, she's got frustration, she's got overwhelmed, she's got uh, the goal of raising well-adjusted kids. She has so many things that she's trying to do all in one day and not enough hours for it. So we're a support system for them. Um, the people that we, demographically, we got, we focused on people that were in our zip codes, surrounding zip codes, um, 33143, 7657, that's Pinecrest, Cutler Bay area, the Falls area. Um, top 25% of earners between the ages of 30 and 50. Now, people who also were looking for martial arts, self-defense, um, were familiar with the UFC, and um, were parents of children between the ages of six and 12 years old. Um, what we offered them was a free week trial to get acquainted with our system. Um, we had a thumb stopping video. We had a compelling message, which led to our call to action, which was to sign up for the free week trial, as you can see here. Our video, uh, it came out okay. Now I can, we can do these pretty often, which is, which is exciting for me to be able to rock these out kind of quickly. I like that. Um, Understanding how to speak to my customers, one week free trial is very important for me. Um, how to appeal to them, how to present simple messaging that will get to the point with them and give them a simple form to, like, to sign up here. I will be working on my landing form. It's not operating the way I want it to, but it's doing the job at least. You know, I just need to fine tune from here out. Our customer's journey. If you look, I don't know if my mouse is seen, but at the very top, you'll find our awareness ad that'll point to our landing page. At our landing page, they can bounce if they go to the left or they can complete the form and begin the free trial. If they do not uh, begin the free, um, if they complete the form, begin the free trial, but do not purchase a membership, then we email nurture them, right? We put them in our email campaign. If they get themselves to our landing page and they bounce, they do not complete the form, we include their visit in our retargeting campaign. Both of them bring them back to um, completing the form or becoming a member, hopefully a um, lifetime member, right? So we want, we want them forever. What, let me see, make sure that's the next slide. Yes. Okay, so our ad budget went up a little bit since last. I've adjusted this. Uh, I've spent $305 for 7,100 impressions. I've, my cost per mil is $42. Um, I received 121 clicks. Um, cost per click was 220, uh, 254, and the conversion rate was 1.7%. Our leads, we received seven leads, of which I've converted four. Um, the cost per lead was $43. I've made four sales, and uh, the cost per sale was $76. Oh, the total sales is not 305, sorry. <laughs> was, um, the total sale was, sorry. I'll give you the number was $11,952, which converts. Yeah, that's this month. So that's, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry. No, that's not, that's not this month. Sorry. That's, 
I have my numbers jumbled up. I just finished this. I'm so sorry. Um, was 249 times four. Okay, it was $996 this month for, if you see the lifetime membership is 12 months, total revenue is $11,950. Um, things that I accomplished beyond getting those customers, I, well, I've got my views up. And so I learned what uh, my 25% views are. I wanna get people to engage a little bit more with my videos, but I didn't achieve improved local awareness and I primed my retargeting campaign as well. Um, sorry about this number down there. My learnings. Well, I learned a complete ad campaign workflow, A to Z. That was the biggest aha, is to have a flow that I can replicate and improve on. So now I feel like I'm ready to rock. Um, prospective customer identification and targeting was key for me also. I know my customer from the receiving end here, but I don't know what they look like outside. And uh, BizHacks course helped me identify that and find the tools, develop the tools to, to do it over and over again. Um, what's next for me and my company? I will uh, fine tune my current campaigns, refine my targeting ads and continue my education in the Meta Business Suite, which is quite elaborate. Um, I wanna master it because I feel that there's a lot to read from there. Also, um, I will be focusing on Google and SEO for my website, um, Google Ads, and I will establish an email nourishment campaign and retention campaign for my current customers. And that is it, guys. That's me. Bravo. Wonderful job. And uh, those were hot off the press uh, data. So uh, good for you for, for some really extraordinary results. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward, Cristobal, to the conversations that you and I are going to have about how to continue your learning journey, because I, I truly begin that you're a yellow belt, but this is just the beginning. I feel great about it. Thank you, Dan. I, I thank you for granting me, minting me with my yellow belt. I feel fantastic about it. I have grown so much because of you, Christy, and and Michael and Dan, thank you all, the whole team, everybody, thanks so much. Absolutely, and uh, Fatia, you should get ready. You're, you're gonna be next up. I'm gonna do just a quick intro, just like I did with uh, Cristobal, and then you're up. Fatia Doster of Juice Defined is the definition of grit and determination. Her uh, participation in the course was sponsored by our amazing partners at the Opalaka Community Development Corporation and the Community Fund uh, of Northeast Aid. And we couldn't be happier uh, that they brought Fatia to us. Part of BizHack's mission is to serve underrepresented businesses like the folks that are clients of the Opalaka CDC. And we are in the privileged position of being able to take the best of the best and the cream of the crop and to help them shine. And it is with incredible excitement that I welcome uh, Tia, the amazing entrepreneur behind Juice Defined. Thank you so much, Dan. And good afternoon, everyone. My name is Fatia Doster. And I am the owner of Juice Defined, as Dan had already stated. So I am going to share my screen so that I can get started. All right. Okay. So let me start from the beginning. I'm sorry, guys. So this is my journey to digital success. I wanted to join BizHack so bad because I really, really enjoy the marketing component of my business and really <clears throat> working to get the awareness of my company out. Um, and because we're doing so much great work in the community, I just wanted to be able to reach more people. And what better way to do that than to, um, to learn and become an expert in the digital realm. And so BizHack definitely facilitated that process. And so I'm going to present to you guys um, what I learned through this course. So my business story basically goes after I experienced preeclampsia with my daughter in 20, 2010 
and having kidney failure and a kidney transplant juicing had become a way of life um, for me and a, just a way for me to make myself feel more alive and feel better. And I quickly noticed because I'm from Miami Gardens, um, there was nowhere healthy in my community to really help facilitate my journey. If I wanted to juice or I wanted to do anything um, <clears throat> as far as health was concerned, or I wanted to make healthier options as far as my diet, I would have to go far away or I would have to do it myself. So Juice Define was literally born to create access to healthier options in my community. And so we exist to bring fresh and innovative wellness experiences to the hood. So starting with my six pillars, when we started this program, it was a lot of technical jargon and a lot of things I really didn't understand. And although I built a really amazing brand, um, I really outsourced a lot of my marketing. And so this was a great opportunity for me to kind of learn the behind the scenes so that I would know what was going on in my own business. And so what I did was I created my customer persona. Um, Aaron Tillman is just a representative <clears throat> of the typical customer that we serve, which is usually Black women um, aged around 23 to 50 years old, looking to make life change, um, lifestyle changes, healthier, have healthier experiences, and usually um, experience disproportionate health issues. And so they're typically busy working women who don't have time to really do a lot of things on their own. Um, and so I was really trying to target them to encourage them to take control of their own health. Um, and so I launched a lead generation ad, which was a seven day juice challenge. And I really was intending to pivot my business to a digital component. I really wanted to extend the digital component of my business. And so with the seven day juice challenge, I thought that would be a great opportunity to not only coach a lot of women through um, how to make juices and make lifestyle changes, um, but also just to motivate them to just, again, take control of their own health. So I launched my seven day juice challenge ad. And so um, I created my thumb stopping video, which I will show you guys really quickly. Oh, sorry. And so my thumb stopping video was pretty much really good. As you guys can see, there was a compelling message, just again, helping or promoting women to take control of their own health in just seven days. And so the call to action was for them to take our seven day juice challenge by signing up on our, <clears throat> by signing up on our, um, signing up on our, um, our lead generation page. So my results um, for the lead generation ad, I um, my ad my ad budget was fifty four dollars and thirteen cents. Um, during that time, I had about five thousand eight hundred seventy one impressions, sixty six clicks. But unfortunately, I had zero leads, and my sales revenue obviously was zero with zero leads. Um, so that was really a wake up call to me because in the course we were pretty much instructed to start with a, um, an awareness campaign versus a lead generation campaign. And so I totally did not follow instructions because uh, I thought, you know, hey, why not go for the big guns, right? Um, but that was my lesson number one is to follow instructions of the experts because they know best. <laughs> So I followed up with that and I did a second campaign, which was my irresistible free offer ad. And this one I feel like was a little bit better structured because number one, it was free. And then number two, I felt like it was less intimidating because it's only a one day challenge versus a seven day challenge. So for customers who may not know me or customers who may not know my brand, um, this probably would entice them more to, you know, check it out because it's not as intimidating as a seven day. And then again, like I said, it was free. Free. So I'll show you guys just a brief of the thumb stopping video that I did um, complete for this one. And it was very basic, um, just, you know, an image or a video of a green juice and just a quick blurb about what the campaign was about. Um, I had my landing page and you can see here, um, you know, it's really just asking them, are you, you know, ready to sign up? Are you ready for the challenge? Um, and my ad budget for this campaign was $74.31. Um, 
the impressions I was not able to grab, but I did have 96 um, link clicks and I had 12 leads during that time. So my biggest aha moment, and I wanted to kind of go back to, um, to the irresistible free offer. So that was during the time that I actually um, ran the ad and we had our final presentation. But since then, we have had over 24 leads for this challenge. And also, <clears throat> excuse me, we've had over three people to visit our store since then to actually make a purchase. So my biggest ahas for this from this program was basically, you know, everybody doesn't know me. So I definitely need to do more work and do more ads around raising awareness about what we do um, and just kind of solidifying our brand to people who may not know who we are. Um, this program has also just encouraged me to take more of a leadership role in my marketing strategies. Um, even if I outsource, at least I'll know exactly what's going on. I can understand the verbiage that's being used. I can actually walk through it with my marketing team and try to <clears throat> and give input that I know I would understand. Um, and what's next for me? So basically, <laughs> have a drink, haha. -ha, like this was very intensive. I mean, it it literally pulled every one of my mental strings because you know marketing is a lot of moving parts and it's a lot of components. And although I had bits and pieces of things already set up, is really bringing them together and making making it cohesive. Um, is the important part for me. So perfecting my funnel. So after I um, launched the free irresistible offer, it sent them to a landing page, uh, which we had over 20, 23 leads for that campaign. Um, and we are still counting, people are still signing up. Um, and so this has led me to, um, it, it triggers a flow of emails for the person who signed up for the one day challenge. So they get walked through the entire process of doing a, completing a one day juice challenge. Um, but my funnels are also in, in place to upsell them to a three day detox and then another funnel to upsell them to a seven day, which is what I tried to present in the first um, experiment. And then also upsell them to the 30 day, which is the big shebang. And so this program has really showed me like how important it is to just kind of have a consistent and cohesive flow when we are really trying to um, have a long-term customer or a customer that's going to, you know, stick with us and really um, rock with us throughout time. So Thank you guys for listening and visit our store if you ever get a chance if you're in South Florida. Thank you. And th thank you so much uh, for, for being here today and you know the support that you get uh, from your partners uh, in the Opalaka CDC uh, is, is really just extraordinary. You, you're, you're very lucky uh, to be supported by them. Uh, I actually wanted to give uh, Leah uh, and Marcella a chance to say a word if they wanted to about you and why you're so special. Hi, this is Leah, and um, I'm sorry I can't join on, on video. Hopefully you can hear me well. Um, yes, we can. The opportunity, we are so proud of Tia, and I'm sure Marcella, if she can chime in, would say the same thing. She is just such a go-getter, so action based and i think that's one of the biggest things in entrepreneurs that you have to be fearless in trying things and accepting of the mistakes and learning from them and then getting up the next day and moving on to the next thing and tia just embodies all of that and is just so open to feedback and support and and any help that we can get her so thank you dan for being a part of this and congratulations to all of the graduates and to tia in particular thank you leah Wonderful. Thank you so much. And uh, thanks again uh, to sponsoring the sponsorship of the Opalaka CDC. And uh, we hope this is just the beginning uh, of many more uh, of your amazing entrepreneurs uh, going through uh, our program. Uh, Lisa Nalvin, you're going to be up next. I'll do a quick introduction uh, and then uh, you'll you'll present. I want to welcome, let me start again, Lisa Nalvin, uh, who has built the most extraordinary recovery board product 
uh, which is a direct result of her own experiences, as you'll learn about in a second, uh, overcoming addiction is one of the hardest working and most resilient uh, biz hacker we've ever had. Um, she was able to generate eight leads and $46, uh, which is pointing a path for her to be able to scale the recovery boards methodology to an audience uh, of recovering uh, addicts across the country who, who desperately need this kind of help. Uh, Lisa's participation in the program was sponsored by the Mindful Entrepreneur, who uh, works with her on other aspects of her business, Suzanne Jewell, uh, and we're very, very grateful uh, to Suzanne for bringing Lisa into our lives. Uh, without further ado, Lisa Nalvin of Recovery Boards. You're on mute. Hmm. I, I can't, you know, it's funny when I'm listening to um, Satya talking and I was, I, I started to get emotional because this has been torture. <laughs> I, I can't believe like how supportive everyone has been and my coaches and even Mike, when I was like, you know what? I don't really need to graduate. I'm here. I showed up. I learned. And my presentation, I, I hate doing this stuff. And he came in at the last minute and he said, and he just reached out to me and said, here, let me help you finish this. And that's BizHack, you know? So I'm incredibly appreciative as the, as the older statesman in the room, you know, cause I'm, um, you know, and, and this is hard. I, I find this challenging. And um, I just, I wanted to talk about that particular moment. Um, cause I said to Mike, when he told me about that, that you just changed Lisa's life forever. <laughs> uh, and it sounds histrionic, but it's, it's actually true. Like for many of you, BizHack will mark a before and an after. You just tackled something that was one of the hardest things you've ever had to do in your life and you did it. And Mike saw that you needed a little bit of a nudge over that hill, but you were right at the crest and he went and he did it and he's not getting paid to do that. He's doing that because of who he is as a human being and who we are as a company. And I just, I want to pull that moment out and just savor it because I, Mike, I, I, I do remember when I told you that you had just changed Lisa's life and that that is why I created this company. And it sounds like, but you will never forget that phone call. You will never forget that nudge and you will never forget that that allowed you not only to become a final presenter, not only to get a certificate, but ultimately to be voted by your peers with the highest honor that we have as the greatest representative we have of the biz hacker mentality. That's what Mike did in that moment. And, and, and that's what brings me to tears. You know, and, and I'm gonna give a shout out, you know, Mike did that, but I, I, would, I would email um, Christy and say, help, I used my coaching sessions <laughs> up in the first three weeks. I don't know what it is, I needed help right away. You know, I, I and I, you know, I, I struggle through and I still find this challenging. You know, I, I'm just gonna say one thing about technology because I think it's pretty cool is that it's like learning a language and the younger you are, the less of an accent you have. It's like when you learn a language as a child, for our kids, my kids, it's so intuitive. The older you get, your accent is thicker. My accent is thick, you know, but I'm, I am tenacious and I keep going and, and with the help of this hack, I'm, I'm incredibly grateful, you know, really grateful. And thank you to both, to everybody. And, and everyone in the class too, was, everybody was supportive. And the fact that I, I was gobsmacked. I was so surprised. I, I, was, I was by jaw <laughs> So thank you. Okay, so here's my little presentation. Okay, so let me share my screen. I'll try not to screw this up. Let's see uh, the screen. You know, with my technical skills, they're limited. Okay, so you can see my screen now, right? Okay, so here's my slideshow. Okay, so I just, there's a little bit of a story in me and, and this has evolved constantly is evolving and changing. Like I think it's even different from when I wrote this. But you know, I, I say I grew up in this wild, crazy, loving, you know, wacky family. And with that dysfunctional wacky family comes a lot of stuff. And I always had stuff. And I lost a brother when I was 12. 
And then my mother buys a bar and I grew up in a bar where there's a lot of drugs and alcohol. And I joined a dance company went to the high school performing arts. So I worked with um, a dance company. And then once again, it's a wild and crazy times and AIDS struck in the eighties. And my best friend died. They called it still called a gay cancer and it decimated the companies and, on, and so many of my friends. So between drugs and alcohol and AIDS, you know, so um, that was my life. But then I'm really grateful, but dancing is like a, a release. And I always had a part of me that went to get help. I, I went to therapy, I took classes. That's just always part of who I am. I've always had that. And that's just who I am because it's not in the rest of my family. But anyway, so once I stopped dancing because we have a shelf life, I became a photographer. I'm a people photographer. And I had a good career in photography. And but photo philanthropy was always my passion. And because I did a lot of touring as a dancer, I got the wanderlust because you travel the world. That's when you work is when you travel as a dancer. And I worked with, all over the place. And I just was always drawn to service. And I started working a lot with the differently able, uh, doing philanthropy, children with severe illness, terminal illness, and the disenfranchised. And they are my ultimate teachers. And that's ultimately what I want to do is do these boards for children in the hospital and work with foundations and also go back to that. Enter the pandemic, um, and I wasn't able to go in hospitals because I work with terminal children and children with cancer. So I created something different with my fine art flower photography. I created a site and all of a sudden I had to sort of market myself in product. And I was completely clueless. Um, and then as it happened, as I was looking for a product, I came across this dry erase board and I created different tools. Recovery boards are one of them. This is what I was doing now with my intention boards, but I will do healing boards, prayer boards. It's all the same thing because they're basically a tool to use as part of a practice, a daily practice. And obviously you guys get a sense of who I am. I do this because it's for me and I need to do this. It's like they say, you teach what you need to learn. I need to learn this on a daily pass. I mean, I am 66. I will be working on myself to the day I could. And here I am. So my target audience were people that are similar to me and that they are interested in uh, um, life skills and personal development and meditation. And also I didn't want to make my audience too big because that was really broad if I got to meditate you know, certain things. So I kept whittling it down as best I could till I got to about 80,000 people. Um, and I decided for this event, which is a little different, I decided to do um, what I realized is that People love the boards, but they don't get what they are or what my intention was. So I decided that I would do a workshop to teach how to use an intention board or a recovery board or a healing board. It doesn't matter because whatever it is, is to be used as part of a practice. And my practice always starts with gratitude, kindness, love. And, and as you get older, you realize what's important in life. And you know that, so that's a lot of what I'll be teaching also. It isn't just, um, because really, I don't know what my business model is and how much money this can make, but ultimately it will serve my other work that I do, which is really to get back into the hospitals and, and or to go to communities where go to Covenant House and teach young kids how to feel good about themselves. So I really would like to work with foundations. And also I've always done photography in places like that where I give somebody a respite or feel good about themselves who doesn't typically feel good about themselves, whether it's their, you know, the world they grew up in, or how they look, or the illness that they are living with. I've worked with a lot of terminal children with cancer. Um, do you want to see my thumb stopping video? Is that, I could do that. Um, I'll do this real quick. Um, and, and I'm going to, as it's, as it's running, you can still all come to my workshop Thursday, I mean Sunday. So mine is 28 seconds, which is a little longer maybe. Um, and, so Lisa, you can uh, pause it because we can't hear you when you're playing it. Okay, well, it's all right. We don't need to do that. Anymore. But it's beautifully done, and thank you for sharing that. And uh, you know, it shows that a video you can make it on your own in a matter of a couple hours. It doesn't have to be a limiting factor for your finishing your campaign. Yeah, it's a lot easier than I thought it would be. You know, 
if, if anything is easy, but I still, I struggle with everything. <laughs> anyway, so I think when I did this, um, this is when, um, you know, Mike came in and helped me do this, but now, you know, you know, if I were to add that, because I realized that in here, there's a lot of things in between here that I have like thank you emails and here I'm, even with the people that have already signed up for my intention uh, workshop, I'm giving things for them to bring and to come with their own intentions and what their intentions are and how to get the most out of it. And at the time I had 12 tickets sold, I now have 37, which is like unbelievable, um, which I'm gonna tell you, show you how that happened too. My ad budget, I actually spent a little less than this and I have like uh, clicks per million, about $46. Um, my conversion rate was about 9%, which according to Mike is pretty good. I got um, about eight leads, so that means eight emails because they, mine was a little different because my ad was a conversion ad that was to, to, um, to Facebook. And then the next one that I'm retargeting now goes right to my Eventbrite page. Um, so it, I'm, I'll, I'll move on to that. And I'm going to show you this now. I want to show something because this is remarkable for me. And this I got from this app. I actually made an Excel spreadsheet. And I actually would have never done this for myself to figure out how and where I got people showing up, which is remarkable. So this is what I did. And I just put it in a little Word doc so it's easier. And I also learned how important my email following is. Um, and you always say that your leads are your emails and that they are golden. Well, through that, I got 11 more people to sign up and I expect that I will still get more because I have other ones going out. And plus word of mouth, I have a certain amount. And yay, and she bought a board for me and she's coming to my workshop, which I'm really grateful. Um, I also got nine organic leads, so I didn't leave. So I still am posting on Facebook. Um, so my following there and also from, from the ad. So that so I'm getting it from all different directions. And to just see how that works was a really learning experience for me. And my tendency is, you know, part of what I've learned is that I don't really want to do this, but I also learned how important it is to understand the vocabulary. And because I don't want to say I've gotten ripped off, but I've gotten sucked in by people who say they're an expert, who are, um, but they don't really, they don't really know what they're doing. And if you can't, I'm not saying they don't know what they're doing, but they're certainly not an expert. But if you can't have a, a conversation, an educated conversation into what your goals are and ask them, well, what about this? What kind of ad are you doing next? That's really invaluable, or is that the right word? So valuable for me to be able to have that conversation with somebody to get the most out of my money. Um, so I learned about you know, methodically analyzing it. I'm not great at it still. And the different objects, I learned everything. So I don't really need to go that because I learned everything. And then now I'm doing my retargeted ad. I'm also doing, I'm going to nurture my, um, nurture, I did sell four boards, by the way. I meant to say that. Um, I nurture through emails and I'm going to create a new landing page for my intention boards and I will, my my goal is, and maybe I can use ads, and I'm not sure if this will work because I really want to work with senior centers and memory care centers. I want to have something that I can show to the hospitals, the children's hospitals that I work with. And I really want to combine my service with this. And if I can make enough money to, um, I mean, it would be great if I made money, but I don't know if this business model is going to make money for me. But if nothing else that it could support my philanthropy, that would be great and do what I love because I've been so blessed in my life. So I still want to do my um, special photography that I do with seniors. And boy, I would love to incorporate the, incorporate the boards with that or with coaches. Dan, I was going to make some for you. I'm going to make one that has a, I need a quote from Dan so I can make an intention board from them. And then you can sit it on your desk, which is what I do. Is I have them and they're like, oh, 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 can you even see that? I don't even think you can. No, no, I don't think you can. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, I, I would I would love that. Um, so, thank you, Lisa, so much. That's it. And I'm just so <laughs> thank you. All right. Well, thank you uh, again. That was a beautiful presentation. Yamil, you're up next.
So it's with special excitement that I welcome Yamil Francisco of the Six Figure University. Uh, she worked with Anne Johnson Bay and Kemiana Jones Bay, uh, two extraordinary entrepreneurs that were introduced to BizHack by the office of the mayor, Daniela Levine Caba, and their Strive 305 partnership with us. And Yamil is uh, an incredible uh, example of how a small business can impact the lives of other small businesses and our community at large. The Six Figure University is taking the best practices that were learned by the Bayes Salon and then giving those tricks of the trade to other salon owners, particularly salon owners from the BIPOC community uh, to allow them uh, 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 to allow them to, uh, to excel uh, in what they do. And so the Six Figure University, by accelerating their launch and the work that they do, we are touching hundreds of other small businesses, the salons that they service. And so one of the reasons that we love when we have agencies and professional service organizations and training organizations like the Six Figure University is by touching you, we touch hundreds of others and we allow your mission to impact many, many people. And so uh, with that, uh, I welcome Yamil Francisco of the Six Figure University. Thank you, Dan, for that introduction. <laughs> and all right, so let's get started. So um, my name is Yamil, like he said, and I'm the chief marketing officer for the Six Figure University, which is the brainchild of Kimiana and Anne. And um, what they, their story is so fascinating because they both had very kind of similar upbringings in a completely different way. So Anne was raised in a farm and she, her grandparents bought this land and they went through a lot to buy this land back in that, you know, those days when black people just didn't own land. And uh, so she learned perseverance from her family and she, um, she understood the value of real estate very young. And then Aunt, uh, Kim Yara was actually born out of a, a family uh, that worked very hard, double shifts, whatever, you know, always working. And until they, you know, they, bought, they purchased their first home and she also got into the, okay, so real estate is a good investment. Now, um, fast forward, and both of them understood one thing and it's that real estate for them at least means you know residual income like you know once you understand how to use real estate in different ways you can build a, a lifestyle and not have to depend on working every single hour for every dollar that you're making and so this is where we all come together right so they decided because they started doing their they, they have multiple businesses by the way these ladies are amazing they um and they do it in, in such a way, I don't even know how many hours a day they spend working, but I know that they work a lot. And, but one of the model business models that they, they really want to teach other people about residual income through real estate. And the first module that, you know, the first training that they wanted to do is to, they want to do the salon suites, teach people how to build salon suites because a lot of salon owners have a lot of space in their salons that they're not utilizing and so they're teaching them how to monetize it so that salon owners have income that doesn't depend on them showing up every single day. And, you know, and, and this is, has been life-changing for the people that they have helped to do this for. So um, they're now in the middle of opening their third salon suite and, um, and it's just, you know, they just keep building and building and building and helping other people build the same. And so I'm very excited to basically help them to achieve this goal. Their goal definitely is to help other people to find freedom. All right. So the pillar, these are the pillars that we worked on and the objective was video views and the target audience. Um, we did actually 
we, because we have been doing a lot of other marketing strategies. We did um, a text campaign. And so what we actually did is that for this particular video, we did based on pixel lookalike. So people that had already clicked on the text and went into the website with the landing page, we would kind of circle them back to us. And we offered them a masterclass, a free masterclass on how to, um, how to basically how people have done this, how people have done built their um, salon, salons into either full salon suites or partial salon suites. And I'm not gonna play the video because we did have a little bit of problem with the audio, but it's just, you know, made on Lumen and it's, uh, it basically talks to salon owners about, you know, monetizing. And so I have here the text, but um, basically letting them know this is what Lydia did, this is what Shanda did, this is what Shanae did, and why don't you join and do the, the class, the master class for free. And so this is where they went into the landing page. It did have a, a nice uh, intro video from Kim Yara, and then they will put in their information and you know, they would um, go watch the masterclass, but all of this is part of the landing page and um, you know, with all the information that they needed to make a decision. So the customer journey, again, because we have been working on other strategies, we did the SMS campaign. We also had the Facebook ads and we also uh, did a lot of um, Instagram organic. All of that traffic went to the landing page then we collect the information, you know, from the free masterclass uh, webinar. And we then we did either the, the customer journey would either be to buy or they would be retargeted either way through the Facebook pixel um, to sell online access after the live event. So the goal was to record the live event and then sell that afterwards if they didn't go to the, to the actual event and also have a campaign follow up uh, email follow-up campaign. All right, so the results, I'm sorry, I can't see. Okay, here we go. Uh-oh, sorry, I misclicked. Okay, there you go. So for this particular, when, at the time that we did this, the, uh, we had spent $26 on this particular campaign. We had uh, 3,458 for uh, imp impressions for a CPM of one zero one cent, not even a cent. And then video views, um, we had basically almost 100% for the three second view and the through plays were 3,711. Maybe some people watched it twice. Again, I'm not sure. But we did have uh, link clicks. There were nine of them that clicked and we had a CPC um, cost of 2.9 cents. So our biggest aha, what we learned with about the importance of how to tell the story, um, we've been, uh, you know, that's one of the things that we learned with this class. Also, how to set up the thumbnail in an ad. This is my big one. I didn't know how to do the thumbnail on an ad on Facebook. I've done it on Instagram, but not on, on the Facebook side. And then uh, we learned about pixels and how important it is to create it. We learned how to track with the Facebook pixels and also how to upload an audience to Facebook, um, which actually Anne did that and she did a fantastic job on that. All right, so then, um, so what's next for us is we're actually pivoting. Um, you know, we kind of came to realize that Kim Yara is like such a resource and, and she, she's such a visionary and it's kind of, we really, trying, they're really trying to move into, okay, we use the information, you do what you need to do with it and, you know, not really be in the middle of it as much. So we're actually pivoting. And so we're going to continue with the awareness campaign, but also we're actually in the middle of building an online platform. So we're actually going online instead of actually doing an event. There may be other events like a meet and greet or a tour or something like that, possibly in June, July, when we when the last um the third location is open for the open you know for the open house and whatnot the so but we're kind of pivoting to go mostly online and which will actually be able to expedite more training modules and uh, without having to wait you know to fill up a classroom per se 
So, but definitely everything that we have learned is definitely going to be used. Uh, it's it speeded up the process for us to go through everything quicker than, you know, going through the pain of not knowing what we're doing. So we really, really appreciate everybody. And Christy, you're an angel girl. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for everything. We um, thank you. I just can't say anything else. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for a beautiful presentation. And um, this is actually an opportunity for us to celebrate uh, an extraordinary partnership uh, that we have forged with the mayor's office uh, that you are the beneficiary of. Um, over the course of the last half year or so, We've partnered with the Office of the Mayor of Miami-Dade County, Daniela Levine Caba, and her Strive 305 initiative to offer a series of master classes that are benefiting businesses like the Six Figure University and hundreds uh, of others. Um, I actually want to share with you the numbers. So far, we've held nine master classes and had more than 100 live attendees for each session, nearly 1,000 total participants. We just today are officially announcing our lineup for season four, and we're featuring the amazing Bruce Turkel, Daryl Weber, and Suzanne Jewell uh, as our masterclass series presenters, some of the top thought leaders in, in all of marketing, and we are so excited for season four. We're gonna blow uh, our numbers away. Um, this partnership uh, was featured in the Miami-Dade Mayor's uh, State of the County uh, address a month ago. Um, I'm gonna play it for a second. Um, and if the sound isn't that loud, uh, um, let me actually do this. Let me see if this helps. Most of us know that in Miami-Dade County, small businesses are the engine that make our economy go. Lifting up all locally owned small businesses is how we will build a recovery that leaves no family behind. Through the incredible work of the new Office of Equity and Inclusion, more small and diverse businesses are now able to compete for county contracts. We launched Strive 305 to support budding entrepreneurs by providing access to capital, training, retail, and often sp office space, mentoring, and more. Somos una economía de pequeños negocios y estamos haciendo todo lo posible para apoyarlos. Over 1,500 small business owners participated in our BizHack classes and the Morning Huddle, online programs that connect them to valuable resources, training, and coaching. Kem Yana, Jones Bay, and Ann Johnson Bay, the founders of Perfect Salon Suites, a shared retail space for beauty entrepreneurs, are just one Strive 305 success story. I was delighted to join their grand opening at Mall of the Americas last year. They're now preparing to open another set of suites at Miami International Mall. We also are moving ahead to complete a study on disparities in procurement to help us level the playing field for minority-owned businesses. What pride uh, we feel in being able to be uh, a part of, of this uh, incredible initiative. And I wanted to welcome uh, Danilo Vargas uh, from the Diversity and Inclusion Office and our partner uh, in the Masterclass Series to say a few words. Danilo? Oh, thank you so much, Dan. And um, wow, what an amazing set of presentations today. And on behalf of Miami-Dade Mayor Daniela Levine Cava, I just want to congratulate all of you for completing this demanding BizHack digital marketing course. And just congratulations on your hard work, your grit, your perseverance. You achieved something that I think is truly great. And let me tell you why. Uh, most of the marketing we come across on a daily basis is usually selfish, ungenerous, derivative, and ultimately ineffective but none of you, because you participated in this amazing class with Dan and his team, 
are going to make any of those mistakes. Dan and his team have taught you how to tell a more powerful and inspiring story that casts your customer as the hero of everything you do. And that's gonna help you be successful going forward. And not only do you have a more inspiring story to tell, you also know how to strive and how to drive ad campaigns that get results, which is amazing. As you graduate from this course, you are now equipped with a competitive advantage and that's exciting. And I hope you will use that advantage to keep learning and growing and thriving in your business. I am especially proud of Anne and Kenyana, who are two of the most enthusiastic, wise, and dynamic entrepreneurs I've ever met. Congratulations, ladies. Don't stop. This is your moment. And I mean that for all of you guys who've done such great work here with Dan and BizHack. It's time to level up and go for more. And if there's anything that we can do here in the office of Mayor Daniela Levine Cava as part of her Strive initiative, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, we are on your team, and I just want to just say how happy I am to join you and congratulate you for everything you're doing. So thank you so much, Dan, for the time. Wow. I just was letting that one land. Thank you, you know, for the work that you're doing, Danilo, uh, tirelessly over many years, starting in South Dade and now moving countywide. Uh, we're going to take over the county and we're going to take over the world, brother, by helping as many businesses as we possibly can. And uh, I look very, very forward to um, season four uh, and beyond. Thank you again Thank you for making much. the time. My pleasure. So one of the things that we really um, pride ourselves in is concrete, measurable performance. One of the ways to measure that is leads and sales. And you saw in those case studies examples of leads and sales. But the other way is to measure the learning journey that our participants take. And you can see here that the marketing masters have mastered most of the learning objectives that we invite them to do in the course. The seven is considered basic mastery. The learning objectives are here on the left and you can see the jumps in two months that they made from where they started to where they ended. And you guys just take a moment and reflect on how hard you worked to achieve those learning gains. We recognize this is just the beginning of the learning journey and we're here to support you uh, all along the way, but you have gone so far so fast. The work, the hard work paid off. The other way we me measure this is the concrete improvement in performance in a digital marketing assessment test. You guys increased in, four, in seven short weeks by 30 points. That's a 13% uptick over almost overnight. Uh, you earned that uh, through your hard work. And this is not just a digital marketing test on the topics of the course. This is about lead generation writ large. You guys are becoming true digital marketing ninjas, marketing masters, black belts, if you will. Uh, the total group ran 43 campaigns. That's an average of more than three per participant, spent $2,500 in ads, captured 222 leads, generated nearly $50,000 in sales, lifetime value, and had a 19.2X return on investment. I'm going to invite my colleague uh, Tiffany to launch a poll um, or I might be able to do it. I can do it right now. There you go. You have dark spots yep. on your screen. Perfect. So I just went ahead and launched the poll and I'll go ahead and share my screen uh, again. Uh, what happened is uh, when you share a video in a special way, uh, it also creates dark spots. Thanks for letting me know. No problem. So you guys all should have a poll now. Um, it asks two questions. One is, would you like additional coaching uh, with your marketing coach? Uh, and second is that we offer uh, a suite of corporate services. And we'd, be, we'd love to know if you have any interest in any of the corporate services uh, that we offer. Uh, you know, no problem at all. Uh, if uh, you're not interested, there's a no thanks at the bottom of each of the questions. Um, one of the things uh, that I know as a guy who does a lot of sales is there's nothing worse in sales than maybe. You know, because we know that maybe is just a slow no. 
but it sometimes can take you weeks and months of anguish to get there. So, you know, we would love to continue the learning journey with you, but no pressure whatsoever. Just let us know where you are and how we can support you. Uh, and we will be there uh, for you. With that, um, uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna pivot now and we're gonna talk about our other amazing program, the LinkedIn Business Edge. So, oh, we're still seeing we're, dark spots. Are you still? Yeah. Oh, I, I know why. The, the Zoom things that stay popped up, it makes like a dark Thank spot. Thank you. Yeah, this will solve for it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next up is the LinkedIn Business Edge Cohort 3. This is our program in thought leadership. And these are the amazing businesses that participated in cohort three of the LinkedIn Business Edge. I wanted to give marketing coach Carolyn Quinton a moment to talk about her experience uh, working with all of you over the course uh, of the last couple of months. Thank you so much. Um, one thing I wanted to say is how they have really increased the use of activity on LinkedIn, even with their keywords and hashtags, which many of them did not realize would really help their um, views on LinkedIn. And also that we have a pod in LinkedIn where we on Wednesdays from 12 to 2 share something that we have posted and then we help each other to drive that post for more views through our comments and through our shares. So what they've learned on LinkedIn in these labs is incredible, but they also supported each other. They brainstormed together. And for the first time, we actually had accountability partners, which meant they had a buddy. So it worked really great. So my biggest um, quote that I always say is if you have a LinkedIn profile, and you're not having any activity going on, then that profile is just a billboard on the side of the road. So make sure if you have LinkedIn that you stay active. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Carolyn. And um, we're so blessed to have you uh, a part of, uh, you've been with us for all three cohorts and uh, you have been just an extraordinary partner uh, in the launch and building uh, of this program. So I, I do wanna thank you. Uh, for all that you've done uh, to make this program a success. And I would encourage all of you guys to send your uh, love and appreciation to Carolyn in the chat. Uh, if Carolyn made a difference to you this semester, show her some love in the chat with an, or with an emoticon uh, to let her know that her hard work, her passion and her dedication meant something important to you. So uh, Rochelle, you're gonna be up first. I'll go ahead and share my screen and do a quick uh, introduction with Rochelle. Okay, let me just get my notes. Rochelle Broder of RB Editing is a word wrangler. And I particularly appreciate RB Editing and Writing and Rochelle Broder because she was someone who uh, I was in an earlier part of my career as a professional writer and journalist. And so you're my type of person. And uh, not only that, we're one of her clients very proudly so. Um, she has, uh, it, this case study is a beautiful example uh, of uh, broadening her reach to uh, reach uh, additional ideal clients to help expand her her business and ultimately help her sell to strangers, which ultimately is the goal uh, of any online lead generation. And so uh, Rochelle was pro uh, chosen by her peers in the LinkedIn course uh, to share, and it's amazing to have you uh, present today for us. And you might be on mute. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> what a great introduction. Pulling up my presentation. Perfect. And let me share. Uh, 
Um, hi, everyone. I'm Rochelle Broder Singer. As Dan said, I'm with RB Editing and Writing, and this is my final presentation on link launching. So just to give a little background, I have had a, what I consider to be a fairly robust LinkedIn presence for a long time. Uh, in fact, for a long time, I really put all my effort into LinkedIn and not, um, not my website. So it was really amazing how much more robust I could make my LinkedIn presence and how much I learned in this class. I work with smart companies, organizations, educational institutions, and individuals to help them share their insights and their stories through writing. Um, these are some of the magazines that I have run and worked on as an editor. Uh, some of my favorite writing books and my two assistants, Ernie and Olive. They're not extremely assistive, but they are extremely cute. Um, I have always loved to read. My parents claim I taught myself how to read, and I actually believe that because I was kind of lonely and bored as a child, and reading opened up whole new worlds for me. Um, it opened up worlds in my imagination, and it also opened up worlds in the realm of facts. And once I realized I could read cereal boxes and SpaghettiOs cans, I learned all kinds of things. For instance, my mother called the cereal honey smacks, but the box said sugar smacks. So I think from then I was just caught. I have a natural curiosity. For me, reading was a way to, um, to use that curiosity positively. And I love sharing other people's stories with the world. For my ideal customer, I zeroed in on a small part of my target market, which is um, universities and colleges and their alumni publications typically. So my persona pair is the director of communications and marketing at a college and the dean of the college. The director is the one really doing all the legwork when looking for an editor or a publications consultant. The dean at a bare minimum has veto power over who gets hired. He or she may or may not be making that final decision as well. For my keywords, this is just a sampling of them. So I had some general keywords like editor and editing, and I had some specific ones related to this, um, this persona pair, like um, alumni communications. And then, um, all the way down at the bottom, you can see I have the owned hashtag of Word Wrangler. And um, that's something I've been using for a while. So that's something that I'll be using on LinkedIn and other social media. Um, just to say, some of these are hashtags, some of these are keywords, and some are both. And what I found was that many of the good keywords did not make good hashtags for me. Nobody was following them on LinkedIn and nobody was using them on LinkedIn. So that was an important realization. My thought leadership focus is broadly writing, editing, and managing publications and communications. Um, there will be some, some more narrow focuses as well. Um, in terms of getting noisy, I had one post on why grammar matters with this great, um, this great infographic that I'm going to give a shout out to my assistant who was on this call who actually really did the work on this graphic. So awesome work, Katie. And um, I also did a couple of polls. This one was on um, sort of a change in grammar that has been annoying me. My biggest ahas were that I have a very real story of me. I could never have told you that before. And I can use it to connect with potential clients. I'm uniquely qualified to do certain types of editing and writing. And the persona pairs exercise really drove home to me that I need to give some serious thought to which customers I want to attract. And when I get into what's next for me and my company, it really stems from that. I need to focus my thought leadership marketing. I don't need to worry about connecting with every type of client I could do and would want to work for. I need to focus on two or three client segments. To do that, um, I have a social media calendar. It's got more general editor and communications posts, and I will be posting weekly from, that from the plan on that calendar. 
And I'm also going to revive the RB editing and writing email newsletter. And I'm going to use LinkedIn's newsletter feature as well. And the goal of these newsletters is to stay on the minds of potential and past clients, as well as to add value for current clients. Thank you all for the opportunity to present. You're getting a lot of love. Uh, Carolyn wrote, uh, so proud, Rochelle, great job. And now you have your story of me. Yes, and, and thank you to the to the teachers who really, really helped and to my and to Denise, who was my accountability partner and is an amazing branding expert. Love it. Beautiful. Um, all right. Uh, Jen Boyer, you'll be up next. I'll do a quick uh, welcome and then you will be on. Let me just go ahead and share my screen. Jen Boyer of CAI has an expertise in IT outsourcing and staff augmentation solutions. And she is just a, a beautiful example of someone who uh, wants to lead by doing. She, her goal in entering this program um, was to take in as much as she could and then share it with her colleagues uh, back at CAI uh, and is, an, is just a great example of, of bettering yourself to better those around you. Uh, Jen, uh, we're, we're so excited uh, by the opportunity to work with you. Uh, and we hope you got a lot out of the program. Uh, we know we got a lot out of working with you. And um, we, we're really excited to help bring this knowledge to CAI uh, and to your colleagues. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate the introduction. Can you see my screen or my background? We can see your screen. Uh, the ch does it say the title of the presentation? It says Chasing Goals. It's perfect. Oh, you, you were OK. We, was, we, we, see right we, see, we see your screen. We see your presentation. <laughs> OK. Great. There. Awesome. So yeah, my story is a little bit different um, because I do come from a relatively large $1 billion corporation. I'm part of a, of a sales team and business development team. I've had leadership roles for particular territories and now moving into a vertical. So this course was very helpful for, for me and it came at a great time when uh, the company is reorganizing and uh, it just, you know, it worked out great to really help me focus on thought leadership and changing my personal message. So I started working when I was 13. I asked my mother for designer clothes and she told me I needed to get a job. So uh, I had a tough time at age 13 with a bicycle trying to find a job, but I was able to become an Avon lady actually in my little neighborhood. So I have my door knocker pin. And I learned all about having a business, what it takes to run a business. I learned the value of great customer service and relationship building at a very young age. I've had a career with CAI now for over 30 years, all the way from an individual contributor as a technologist to leading an organization in sales. And again, now moving into specific verticals. So I'm a very goal-driven person, always have been. I believe in having a race and some kind of education or training on my calendar at all times. So this course came around and, and I wanna thank Cheryl Cattell very much, who's a previous customer and a personal friend of mine for inspiring me and helping me to become involved in this class. It's been excellent learning. So in addition to achieving my own goals, I love helping my clients achieve their goals when it comes to business technology and delivering new solutions. So my ideal customer is a chief information officer for Fortune 1000 companies. And, you know, they're looking for what's happening in the industry, what's happening in my industry, and how do I leverage technology to solve the problems of the business and, in today's world, really help the business innovate, gain competitive advantage, and drive forward. 
So uh, one of the things I found very interesting in terms of the keywords and hashtags, I like Rochelle, I, you know, fashion myself as being pretty LinkedIn knowledgeable, but when I looked behind some of the words I was using, there really wasn't much, there weren't many followers, um, they weren't the best hashtags or keywords to use. So I've since refined that to have access to a bigger audience. <clears throat> In terms of my thought leadership and content strategy, uh, I want to be seen as a thought leader on trends, future state, best practices, and technology solutions in the hospitality, travel, and logistics industries. So here you'll see I'm doing a, a post about robotics, you know, helping in the kitchen, dealing with some of the staff shortages today. I'm also an expert in IT consulting, outsourcing, staff augmentation solutions, so that's another area where I'm posting content. It's really the combination of what needs to happen in the business and then how are you gonna do it and what are the people consulting resources you need to do it. My biggest ahas, well, there were a lot. <laughs> um, leveraging pods for expanded exposure is it's great. I love having our cohort pod which has been a real eye-opener. That's something that certainly we can implement within my own company and found new ways to do that. Um, better, again, better focus on my thought leadership was really important. I had a profile that was a mix of, you know, here I am as a salesperson, here I know some stuff about IT. So working with Cheryl, who was also my coach, really helped me refine that message and uh, will help me better drive my content. And I love the new tools that are out there. So many of them are free um, and available, and they've been really helpful in building interesting posts, unique posts, and getting that out there. So what's next for me and my company? Uh, again, aligning with the CAI reorganization, we now have these vertical practices. Now, my job is really to be a thought leader in that space. So I think this course and the information and participation in this course is something that could be very valuable for other leaders in other verticals. So certainly I wanna share that, get more people involved. Um, the last piece is really implementation. So just I, having a content calendar, doing pods, continuing to grow thought leadership content it's a matter of getting that done and just really sticking to that content calendar, leveraging the pod and keep growing from here. So uh, again, thank you very much, BizHack. It's been an excellent experience. And uh, certainly I learned much more than I ever expected I would. <laughs> so it was great. So thank you. Thank you. And we're so uh, honored. I think you may be uh, representing the largest company ever to work in the history of BizHack. And uh, we're very honored that uh, you chose us as well. All right, next up is Angelique. Angelique, Angelique Barnum of the Sash Company, also known as Sash Co., uh, is an extraordinary. Uh, entrepreneur and the world's leading creator of sashes for graduations and sororities and pageants like Miss America, which is one of her clients. And she came to us uh, and she said, I want to get Miss Universe and all of their pageants too. And so LinkedIn and building out partnerships and relationships on LinkedIn is one of the paths that she's using to achieve her manifest destiny, which is to be the exclusive uh, sash maker for the top pageants in the world. Uh, Angelique, we love your product. We love working with you. Uh, and we're honored to have you as one of our featured presenters today. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, thank you. Um, here we go, guys. It's been um, an incredible journey. Uh, you guys, it's okay, here we go. Um, thank you for having me. Um, when I first joined um, this LinkedIn course, my um, my score was 16, which equivalent to about 16 minutes that I'd ever spent on LinkedIn. 
And so I am grateful for this. Um, it has taught me so much and it's really aligning with my goals as, um, as a leader and as my company. So there go. Um, this is my, um, my business evolution in, 2000, um, in 2022. My husband came to me and he said, honey, I need a graduation stall. And I've sewn since I was a little girl. And I said, what the heck is a graduation stall? And he was the president of a campus club um, in college. And they looked around and they couldn't figure out where to order them. I've sewn since I was little. And I said, okay, fine, I'll do this. And then I looked around on the internet and I realized that there wasn't a single other company on the entire internet that was selling graduation stalls. And we had two little girls at the time and his company that he was working for was unstable. And I looked like, you know what? I can do this. And so I started this company from a kitchen table and it's been 20 years now. Um, my evolution about three years into my business, um, Miss America had was doing a, pro, a production of a reality show. And um, that show, the producer sent out a call for samples from across the country from all the different sash companies. And um, lo and behold, they chose us. And I remember meeting the big wigs at Miss America. And I looked at them and they hadn't done sashes since 1972. And I looked at them and I said, don't you think it's time? Don't you think it's time to go back to sashes? And the VP looked at me and goes, you know what, Angelique? You're absolutely right. So I designed the sashes for Miss America and we've been the longest running sponsor ever since. And to be honest, guys, it is their, the most important brand tool that they have. Um, in uh, 2020, I was awarded Business Women of the Year by NABO, which is the National Association for Women Business Owners. And I was a finalist for the state of California. So, um, and then COVID hit right after that. We went to 8% of our business for about three and a half months. And it was tough, but we dug in and we made it. We pivoted for a second. And um, now our sales have recovered and we're up. So really exciting and, and fun journey. Um, and my persona pairs, one of the things that tools that we've discovered and, and built on in, in this class, um, I have uh, dis discovered that we have two, um, the high school activities director and the pageant um, director. And this is a national director. And you can see that there is a ton of keywords that, um, that have come out of this a lot that we've already had, but there was a few new ones. And um, so these are you know, great tools that we've been, I've been using on LinkedIn. Um, my thought leadership um, is, um, I have two very different um, sections, which is graduation stoles and pageant sashes. Um, I've learned that creating posts that relate to everyone Anyone who's graduated with any degree, there's an academic color. So pulling in people from, from all kinds of sorts of, of um, education and getting them to be curious about what they graduated in or what was that color, it's just kind of connected people. And then in Miss America um, is always someone, something fun to look at. So um, some engagement there and more engagement that I've ever had on anything in LinkedIn. My biggest ahas, when I first got into this course, I realized that there wasn't hardly any presence at all in my industry. And at first I was very discovered. You try to, you try to hashtag pageant sash in LinkedIn and there's no followers. And um, I was a little discouraged at first. And then I realized what a great opportunity this is. I can take this and I can be a thought leader for my industry in, in LinkedIn. And um, and I'm going to be building my brand, building myself as a brand. Um, I'm the constant in our company and I'm um, reaching out to pageant owners and directors, helping them build themselves and their pageants and just be, being a thought leader for my, for my industry. And then also um, we're the largest um, and considered the world's best sash company and really um, highlighting that on LinkedIn as well. What's next for me and my company to continue building my LinkedIn, um, to find and initiate um, other opportunities to tell my story through podcasts, media, um, build my personal brand, my website. We're technically um, re, um, redoing the website, um, social media audience, email campaigns, a second selling platform, um, position myself as the big fish in, in the pageant world when it comes to sashes and then to upscale our packaging to show off our luxury brand. 
So that's it for my presentation. I'm very, very grateful to um, Dan and the whole entire BizHack team. I am, I've learned so much and I thank you all. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, this has been just an amazing experience working with you in this program and in as part of our consulting work as well. Um, Denise Kegler, you're up. Uh, and just a quick heads up, we are running a few minutes behind, so we will end at 2.30, uh, but uh, with your help, Denise, if, if you could keep a, a, the pace up, we still have a couple things we need to do. Um, let me do a quick introduction, uh, and, then, and then you'll be up. Hang on. Denise Kegler of MDK Management is an extraordinary entrepreneur uh, and an extraordinary human being. Uh, we first met Denise as part of our Digital Marketers Edge program, and then uh, she just participated in, in our LinkedIn program, a dual graduate, one of the few uh, and proud. And she's also someone who uh, has really taken uh, thought leadership to the next level as an organizer of Black Professionals Month, which BizHack was an inaugural sponsor of. Uh, Denise, uh, it's an honor to have you uh, be a part of the BizHack family once again, and we look forward to hearing about the results of your thought leadership work this semester. Great, great, great. Thank you, Dan. Okay, now I got it up. Now I got it up. So thank you, Dan. And yes, I will make this, I will make this quick. Um, so let's get started. My business story. So I was an incredibly shy, introverted kid. I was terrified of my own shadow. I had no self-confidence, no identity, no voice. And I learned though very early on in my career that there was a direct connection between having a personal brand, a defined personal brand, a purpose and career advancement. So because of that, my everything I do, everything my company does, MDK Brand Management is all about inspiring breakthroughs. And so I do work with professionals of color, men and women and women entrepreneurs who want to step, step up, stand out and break through. So I have three ideal customers. My customer pair are people of color, a man and a woman, one in corporate, one in nonprofit, and then a woman entrepreneur. So those are my three primary customers, ideal customers. My hashtags and my keywords are focused around branding and careers, uh, nonprofit, professionals, and women. So my thought leadership content strategy is around this, around the research that I did and found, which is that businesses really do understand that underrepresented professionals who have access to career coaching, to that outside resource that is going to help them define their brand, that is going to help them break through, do feel more inclusive. They do feel like they belong more. And that is going to help retain talent within that organization. And so because of my background, because I grew up in corporate, being responsible for corporate branding, brand management, and of course, being an underrepresented um, person in this, in this underrepresented group, being a Black female, I have the experience. I can relate to this critical customer. And that makes my company uniquely qualified. Uh, to provide the career coaching and the career coaching that is based on both defining a brand and helping clients uh, find and discover their purpose. So get noisy. So what I did around thought leadership because of my own background being this shy introverted kid is I wrapped my whole thought leadership around or made it visible, I guess, within my LinkedIn post, which I did a video. And in this video, which I'm not going to show, but I did put together a series of photos of me as a child, this, this scared of her shadow, shy, introverted kid. And I showed a progressive progression within my thought leadership video of this kid. And you see me looking down and that's what this series of, of photos really does represent present is my shyness. And then I show though how I was able to manage 
those challenges, to manage those divert that diverse that adversity, to break out and to achieve my career goals, to really build a career in corporate and then break through and achieve some career success. And I had some hashtags in that video. So my key learnings, my biggest ahas, and much like others have said, Jen, um, one said there were a lot. I had a lot too, which is great. So my social score index, first of all, I never even heard of SSI before this class. And now I understand why it's important and it really does influence your visibility. So the higher you can, and, and Angelique mentioned what hers was when she started. So it really does help to be active on LinkedIn and that does help you bring that score, which I never knew about. Um, I did, and I do like answerthepublic.com. And I'll just highlight one more, which is a LinkedIn profile. I did not understand how important that banner was. And I'm also not as active as I should have been, but active on LinkedIn. And I didn't understand the power of that banner. So I've updated that. And the biggest thing was that video. And I did create, and I have on my LinkedIn profile, a profile video which is something I never even thought was even possible before uh, linked before this class or something that you know we should even think about doing before this class. Oh, before I forget, I do want to, this is so I wouldn't forget is putting this here. I do want to thank BizHack as a whole, but certainly um, Cheryl and Carolyn, and especially my link launchers cohort learned a lot from everyone in this class. So what's next for me and my company? So this is a QR code that takes you to my website, MDK Brain Management. But my future, what I'm really going to focus on are in these two categories, career coaching and business consulting. Career coaching, definitely write more relevant posts, which I wasn't very good at keeping um, up on a high level of engagement through my posts. I do want to make sure I write more posts. And I do, um, someone said earlier about the pod, I do want to make sure that I'm commenting and offering insights on posts and not just liking them because I didn't realize how important it was to actually comment on a post. Um, and then connecting with job searchers and HR professionals for career coaching. And then business consulting. I do work with nonprofits and small businesses to help them build their brands. So I do want to write more relevant posts about that to establish a uh, um, I guess establish a broader uh, and more visible thought leadership platform around business consulting, working with or joining relevant LinkedIn groups and asking for client reviews is are two of my primary priorities. And that's it. I hope I didn't take up too much time, Dan. I hope I saved you some time. Thank you so much. Uh, you were perfect uh, as always. Uh, just a model uh, of, uh, of uh, incredible small business perseverance. All right, so we are going to blast through uh, the graduation part of the presentation. Um, I did wanna just share uh, this one uh, wonderful stat, uh, which is kind of really the bottom line uh, for us, which is um, the incredible increases uh, that we saw in, in a number of key metrics, uh, such as post views, um, and uh, increases over the course of just five short weeks uh, in profile views and search result appearances. This is giving yourselves more uh, at bats to the plate. Th these are your ideal customer discovering you and looking at you um, in LinkedIn. And that's how you generate business. Um, I wanted Dan, to uh, invite us. Dan, can you, um, oh, okay. I was gonna say, can you do something? Okay. Yeah, no, it's because I wanted to invite us all to take our class photo. Um, so uh, this is a big tradition of ours. Um, everybody uh, uh, make yourself presentable. Cristobal, we need you, where are you? Uh, this is your moment. Um, uh, so everybody, uh, uh, there you are, thank you, thank you. Uh, Jennifer Tripp, uh, Dennis Corrigan, if you guys are able to um, say hey. I did wanna point out that Stephanie Miller got dressed up for today's presentation. She's wearing her signature um, uh, uh, robe, uh, because it's really cold in Boston. Uh, so, um, uh, Danielle Kegler, uh, Sasha Awa, if you guys are able to turn on your video, now is the moment. Um, and, uh, who's going to lead taking the picture? I'm going to take the picture. So, okay. We all fit in one screen. So one is going to be like the regular one and then the crazy one. So this is the regular one, three, two, one. 
Okay, let's take another one. Open your eyes. One, two, three. Then a crazy one. Lil Lily, are you sure it's are you sure it's one screen? Because I have two full screens. In mine, it's just one. Okay. Uh, cool. For all the people who have right. the camera on. The, let me actually lower my light a little so I'm not so white. Okay. Uh, all right. This is the crazy, crazy one. This is the one, one. that counts. We, we only use this one. One, two. Okay, let's take another one. You can change your pose. One, two. All good. And one more, one more. Okay, one more. One, two. Awesome. Yamil, what the heck? <laughs> she was like, no, not me. <laughs> I saw you. I'm watching you all. Thank you for that, guys. Thank you for indulging my silly side. Um, we always, we've never used those first pictures. I don't even know why we take them. We only use the silly ones. Uh, and we do use them for uh, blackmail. Um, I want to recognize that uh, some of the folks uh, in the program are uh, who are getting recognized today are actually the instructors. Uh, Michael Pace is now a certified lead instructor of the Digital Marketers Edge. Congratulations, Michael. Christy Stewart Harfman is now a certified marketing coach of the Digital Marketers Edge. And Suzanne Jewell, who couldn't make it today, is now a certified marketing coach uh, of BizHack Academy and the lead build and, and the LinkedIn Business Edge. I want to hand it over to Michael Pace, who's going to now uh, give the certificates for the Digital Marketers Edge. Okay, and just before I do that, I would just like to say thank you to um, to my cohort for putting such a lot of effort in and um, really um, getting to grips with the coursework. There's so much involved in this, um, but it's a great it's, and it's fantastic. And a tribute to you that you came up with such great presentations. And there's a lot of people that couldn't present, which is a, is a shame. I mean, we got Jalisha who did a fantastic campaign, Tiffany, Jennifer Fernandez, uh, Ramisha, Tang, Tangi, um, you know, uh, and Jamie as well. Jamie did a fabulous campaign, fabulous presentation as well. So um, well done to everybody. And um, this is the first step in terms of your transformation. Um, I think you sort of realized uh, how much there is to learn and you really got off to a great start. And uh, I hope that uh, you can take this journey onwards and, uh, and keep going. I'm sure you'll be able to do that. So thanks very much. And also I'd like to say a particular thanks to Christy. Um, and um, I feel that, you know, her, her blog is Happy Family, Happy Family blog. And um, it's, uh, I think she turned us into a sort of like a, a happy family altogether. You know, it's like BizHack became her happy family. And uh, I think that's amazing. And um, it's, a, it's a great, it's a treat to work with her and to, um, to absorb some of that really positive energy. So thank you. Thank you for being a coach. And I guess here we go. So the certificates, certificate of completion to Alessandra Delgado Ramirez. Certificate of completion for Anne Johnson Bay. Uh, certificate of completion to Cristobal Gidi. Okay. Uh, certificate of participation to Denise Redding. A certificate of completion to Fatia Dosta. Certificate of completion to Ingrid Stanika. Uh, certificate of completion to Jamie Spector. Uh, certificate of completion to Jennifer Fernandez. And certificate of completion to Jalisha St. Louis. Uh, certificate of participation to Justin Himmelbaum. A certificate of participation to Kayla Kogan. A certificate of completion to Kemiana Jones Bay. A certificate of completion to Lisa Nalvin. A certificate of participation to Maya Danielle. And certificate of completion to Olivia Cantu. A certificate of completion to Ramisha Ijaz. And certificate of completion to Tangi Frederick. A certificate of completion to our own Tiffany Laura. And certificate of completion to Yamil Francisco. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mike, and thank you for all that you do. Uh, now I'm going to welcome Cheryl Cattell of the Link Launch Launchers to say a few words and present the certificates. 
All right, thanks, Dan. Um, I just want to say I'm going to try to keep it very brief. And uh, there were very there were many people in this cohort. This is our third one. Um, but I have to say that there are many, many people in this one in particular who are very, very near and dear to my heart. And I believe that in life that whatever we're doing is just a stage to bring together exactly the right people for the things that we need to learn together. And so even though some of you I just met, I feel like through the course of this, uh, this last six weeks has been a very uh, intense opportunity for us to connect at a deeper level than just our SSIs. And for that, I am eternally grateful. So um, I do also want to give a shout out to my rock, Carolyn, who was always there for me. And um, I just want to say that I, you know, you think you came to learn, but I got so much more out of this probably than you all did. So, all right, with that, let's go, let's launch. All right, um, I just want to, I'm just going to go ahead and read through the names. So Angelique Barnum, congratulations. And Caroline Lettequist, um, fortunately, she was in Switzerland uh, and was uh, participating at 11 uh, p.m. at night. So bless her heart. Okay, uh, certificate of completion by the hair on her chinny chin chin, Cassidy Meeks, <laughs> just got her uh, presentation in uh, last night. Uh, also, uh, Danielle Pedrosa, congratulations, participation, and any more? There's a few more. Oh, there we go. Uh, congratulations to Denise Kegel, Kegler. Danielle. And uh, by the way, Denise, I'm sorry we got your uh, your business name wrong in this slide. All right, and uh, congratulations to Dirk Culpepper. Uh, is he in? Uh, see, he's here. No. And to Dominique Jean Baptiste. And congratulations, Edward Patience. And Elizabeth Wing Spooner. Congrats. My childhood friends. We've known each other over 40 years. Uh, congratulations to Glenn Koppel. And congratulations to my former colleague and dear friend Jen Boyer. And congratulations to Jennifer Tripp, one of my new best buddies. And a certificate of participation for Ketchy Morier. And congratulations to Margaret Martin. Completion, yay. And Marge Lennon, way to go. Um, maybe our <laughs> oldest uh, and wisest uh, graduate, Dan, um, celebrating her, what, 80 years on uh, around the planet. So. That's congrats. All right, and to our very own Michael Pace, congratulations. And Rochelle Broder Singer, congratulations. And there we uh, go. Good job, yeah. everyone. Very proud. great job. Uh, our, our biggest award, this is the award that is picked by the students for their peer who best represents uh, someone who embraces new challenges, works their tails off, experiments and tries new things and sees failure as an opportunity to learn. The biz hacker mentality is someone who's willing to do constant experimentation, embrace the new, fish with a spear instead of a net, uh, shows patience and perseverance, never stops learning, and is willing to fail gloriously. And for the Digital Marketer's Edge, our biz hacker award winner is Lisa Nalvin. For the LinkedIn Business Edge, the first ever two-time winner of the Biz Hacker Award is Denise Kegler. We're so honored, Denise. And then finally, a surprise Big Hacker uh, Biz Hacker Award. Uh, today is Lilia Posos's birthday, and I wanted to acknowledge her with uh, a Biz Hacker Award, perhaps the mother of all Biz Hacker Awards, all that she has done for uh, Biz Hack and all of our businesses. Uh, over the years um, and for the masterclass series. Uh, and uh, there is, uh, that is one of our birthday gifts uh, to you today. We actually have a little birthday surprise for you coming up here momentarily. Thank you, Lilia. Uh, we appreciate you so much. Um, so I, I did wanna share that we do have applications opening for the Digital Marketers Edge and LinkedIn Business Edge starting soon. 
Um, we're going to launch now a poll uh, inviting you to let us know if there's anyone that you know who you think would benefit from either of those programs, and we'll follow up with you. We also uh, want to see here how, what you thought of today's graduation. Uh, anybody who's interested in those programs can just go to business slash apply. Um, this was the average return on ad spend by BizHack participants. For every dollar they spent in ads, they made $29 in sales. Uh, we still have 10 seats left in our upcoming Digital Marketers Edge cohort. Would love for you to fill them. And we've given out nearly a quarter million dollars to underserved businesses as part of our scholarship program. Very proud of that. Um, Coming up in BizHack Live, as we said, season four kicks off in two weeks from today at 12.30 with Bruce Turkel talking all about them. Anyone who's ever seen Bruce speak uh, knows that this is gonna be a dynamite session. Finally, the last round of thank you gifts before the little special birthday surprise for Lilia, and we'll wrap up here. A free one hour marketing strategy session with Michael Pace, and the winner is? Cristobal Giddy. A free one hour influencer marketing session with Christy Stewart Harfman. And the winner is? Jolisha St. Louis. A free one hour real estate salon suites consultation. And the winner is? Fatia Doster. A complimentary magic session with Forethought Marketing. And the winner is? Kimiana Jones Bay. To review and edit your website homepage or about us page with RB editing and writing. Winner is Edward Patience. A two hour basics of business writing uh, live online class with RB editing. Winner is Jen Boyer. Love it. A 30 minute website brand alignment assessment with MDK brand management. And the winner is? Marge Lennon a complimentary press release for your company uh, with Lennon Communications. And the winner is? Angelique Barnum. Yay. The MBTI assessment and debrief Myers-Briggs with Quinton and Associates. And the winner is? Glenn Coffold. Yay, Glenn. A Google ad audit of one campaign with Digitally Connected. For Denise Kegler. Good for you, Denise. A free one-hour strategy session with Mike Pace at Connected Jewelry to Dirk Kuiper. And then finally, to wrap up things, thanks guys for hanging out. I don't know if you guys have noticed, I've been drinking from this. This is the first BizHag mug in history. Uh, and we wanted to give it uh, as a birthday gift to Lilia and her husband, Danny, uh, who've had many long nights uh, with us over the last three years working with us. Lilia, uh, you, to your husband, Danny, uh, happy birthday. Um, Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Uh, so thank you guys. Thank you all for being a part uh, of this. And just remember, we are stronger together. We look forward uh, to working with all of you um, and to continuing our learning journey now and into the future. Thank you guys so much. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you for your birthday wishes. Happy birthday. You're welcome. Video. And the Biz Hacker Award. Woohoo. I that's amazing. That was a complete surprise. Thank you guys. Yeah. All right, everybody. Have a good one. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Stay Ryan. in touch. That's awesome. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you soon. Bye, everybody.